Alrighty guys, what is going on? My name is Toby Emu, and we're going to break down Monday Night Raw for 8-22-2016. Now, I'm going to say, in these Raw reviews, you may have noticed a different tone in them. Or you may have noticed a different tone in me overall. Listen, I love the hardcore wrestling fan. But as a lifelong wrestling fan, being that hardcore into it kind of took away the excitement for me. So a lot of these reviews, talks, shows, live shows are not only going to focus on the, the good of it, we will talk about the bad and what possibly could have been improved, but I'm going to be looking for the things that make sense more long-term than they do immediately right now. Because not all shows need to put their best stuff out. Sometimes you got to draw them in. Now, the show opened with Finn Balor relinquishing his title. This sucks because he put on one hell of a match with Seth Rollins at the pay-per-view and ultimately finally accomplished it. Coming from NXT straight up to the main roster and winning his title in his very first appearance at SummerSlam, only to be taken out of contention with an injury for the next three months. Now, this sucks. After he came out and relinquished the title, a couple guys came down to the ring. You had the likes of Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens. You had Big Cass and Enzo. Roman Reigns came out for a little talk, and I'll be honest with you. When they all came out, there were some names that were missing. Neville would later be in a qualifying match, and we would find out that a fatal four-way match would go into the title next week. Now, right away, people bitched and complained, why not? Why not crown the champion tonight to capitalize on the crowd? Because the crowd could really put somebody over. But it's a TV show. You want to have continuity and you want to have a draw. You know you're going to get a big crowd the night after SummerSlam, just like you are the night after WrestleMania. So use it to your benefit. And to me, that night's show accomplished it. And here's why. Sami Zayn versus Seth Rollins was an absolute masterpiece. Now, you may be saying, Tommy, what do you mean? It's the same old shit Rollins won. But is it? See, in the past, maybe he would get a victory. But instead, mid-match, mid-first segment before they went to commercial break, Sami Zayn tweaked his ankle. Or at least it appeared to, so for the rest of the match, he sold it. This gave Sami Zayn an out to lose the match, not to make him look weak. They could have put on one hell of a barn burner, and ultimately he could have won, which could have got him over. But the sympathy, the fact that he kept going, he kept putting up a fight, is going to help Sami Zayn's underdog character when he ultimately wins the big one. And that's something that's more long-term booking. And if you're a Sami Zayn fan now, you're probably a little disappointed, and it's understandable. But Seth Rollins is a multi-time champion. And let's be honest here, he deserves to be in that main event. But Sami Zayn selling the injury gave him that out and made it seem plausible now we went on to the universal fatal four-way qualifier with nevins versus kevin owens now neville versus kevin owens again saw somebody come out now one of the best things going is jericho i love jericho when they won on the pay-per-view it was pretty awesome and i'll say this to you kevin owens coming out trying to help later on in the night which backfired really goes to help the story between the two. Who's got who's back? At the pay-per-view, he really did live up to the storyline. Kevin Owens the first week said, that's the big one, you want to watch out for him. And any time that he got tagged in, Kevin Owens would go in. Now, Neville in this match, well, he had some stuff to deal with. He almost won the match, but the interference ultimately would get knocked down. And Kevin Owens would use the big neck breaker from the top and deliver the crushing blow and allow Neville not to win. Now, did Neville necessarily need a win? No. Kevin Owens is on a path to greatness, and this is just one of those steps to ultimately maybe something happens next week where him and his tag team partner don't win, and we ultimately get what should come. Now, Cass versus Rusev. I saw a lot of people also complaining online. Now, that's a little later on, but I want to touch on it now because this is definitely something that I want to care about. Because Big Cass and Enzo, still in a tag team, are doing what they should. Big Cass should be moving up. Now, Rusev is a champion already. And the fact that Rusev walked off, a lot of people thought it was a crappy finish. But Rusev, the standing champion, who would go on to SummerSlam, before SummerSlam, on Raw, to have one hell of a match with Roman Reigns, for everybody to complain, why wasn't that on the pay-per-view? Only to have their pay-per-view match not be an actual match at all, like I kind of had speculated. And it turned into something, even though the crowd hated it, it worked. Because the next night on Raw, Rusev was selling his injury, and Big Cass was exploiting it. Ultimately, so much so, that when Rusev hit the big kick, Big Cass bounces off the ropes and lays a boot of his own. 
Rusev retreats. Now, to the casual fan, which I hope you're enjoying, you roll out of the ring and you say, I don't need this. I say no to that. And to me, that's good because it helps get Big Cass over. And he didn't necessarily have to win or devalue Rusev as a champion because Rusev has already got other things going on in the background. Now, this is where things, I don't want to say necessarily took a turn for me, but I thought could have been a little better. Now, after that match, we saw the New Day backstage. They were coming up because they have shenanigans. They came out to the ring. Now, Big E is absolutely off the chains, and I love Big E. Francesca, too, made an appearance, and they were going to go after the pinata. Then it went to the one-on-one match between them. Again, people were complaining that Luke and Carl would ultimately falter to the New Day. But the New Day become champions for 365 days. That's a 365-day title reign. That's a long time. In that 365 days, they've beat a lot of tag teams, and they've done a lot of good. So, falling, or winning in this case, doesn't actually bury Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows in the slightest. I hate that word now. Oh, I hate that word. It's a one-on-one match, and they still got some things going on based on what happened on the pay-per-view. Some funky things happened. It still was a three-on-two, and ultimately, he would fall. Big E would win, and Carl Anderson would get laid out. But later on in the night, they would come back with something big and brutal to help try to get some more heat on them, which hopefully pays off down the road. I will say this. Titus O'Neil in the ring, he got quite a bit of heat. No, there's that word again that I wanted to avoid. If you're a casual fan, he messed up his promo quite a bit. It didn't go how it was supposed to, and at points in that promo, I actually thought, damn, Titus could be a really good heel. And then other points, it makes me go, I don't think he's ready for the microphone. Now, that's one of the reasons why I loved him in the primetime players, especially having a manager. It's a case of, you're a good-looking cat, you could be a world champion, but there's something holding you back. And now we kind of know what it is. This isn't an end-all be-all, because you can work on your mic skills. Look at Cesaro's promo after he got drafted to Raw. It was a little shooty, but it came off awesome. Titus is going to need some work, but ultimately he could get over, possibly one day. Bob Backlund coming out was probably the best part of the segment, and Titus ended up beating him down. Coming back from break, we saw a couple other things, and uh, we found out that Brock Lesnar would have some repercussions. Oh, man. That's not good, right? Rusev and Cass happened, which we've already talked about, and then came back between the tension on both being in the Fatal 4-Way. What would happen? But now they don't want to focus on it. They want to worry about the main event tonight. And it, comedy, stupid idiot, to Phillips. Another thing, when I was in the live crowd, the stupid idiot chant that went off was awesome. Next, we have Charlotte in the ring. And Charlotte's talking about how she beat her. All by herself, and she reclaimed her throne. Now, Mick Foley came out and said, Sasha will get a rematch when she's hurt, back from injury. And But they signed the hottest free agent. And finally, finally, after a long-awaited time, we get Bailey. How awesome is this? Now, some people are going to bitch and complain. Hey, what took so long? Does it really matter because Bailey's here now? And she's going to be going for the title. Because she did get the victory. Now, the Bailey to Belly for the win is going to earn her a title shot. And we're going to have to see where it's going to be. Is it going to be a Clash of Champions or is it going to be on a Raw? Well, that's quite a debut, especially considering all the speculation. And if you're a casual fan, you may not know this, and I hope you uh, don't know this and you're glad for it. But Charlotte was supposed to, quote-unquote, take some time off, but now she has the title. Hmm, where's that going to go? That's kind of interesting. But Bailey on Raw, where do we go from here? Well, we raise those wacky inflatable two-man arms and celebrate because I'm happy. Now, backstage, we found out that uh, the Cruiserweights are coming to Raw. Roman was backstage, and he asked about him, and he told me he was going to shut his mouth. Once we got the look at the Cruiserweights, we kind of found who's going to be in the division based on the promo. So far, Rich Swan, Brian Kendrick, Noam Dar, and TJ Perkins, which is awesome. I just saw TJ Perkins at Evolve 67, and I'm a big fan. I have been. If you guys watch TNA, he was also really good. Later on, we had Braun Strowman versus Johnny Knockout. 
Braun Strowman still showing new stuff each and every week. And I'll be honest, I think it's fine. That's what you do. You use the enhancement talents to your benefit. Now, in the ring, you're seeing Cesaro versus Sheamus, and they are going to have a best of seven series. This is also good. Instead of having a repeated group of matches leading to a pay-per-view blow-off, why not have a best of seven? First one to win four matches wins, and it was kind of hinted that the winner will get a title shot. We don't know if it's going to be a United States championship yet, or possibly for the Universal title, but it's something for them to fight for instead of Sheamus versus Cesaro just constantly happening. That's what we wanted WWE, isn't it? Don't we want people to be competing for something instead of having some random blow-off? Cesaro losing to Sheamus because of an eye poke and a bro kick is perfectly fine. I know everybody wants Cesaro to get over, but what better way to do it than a long, brooding rivalry with a Celtic warrior, a former multi-time champion? It's going to help him. Then we had the Dudley send-off, and I'll be honest with you. I dug it, and here's why. The Dudleys come out with one of the best promos. Had they been doing that the past year? Oh, man. But the Dudleys are somebody in the business that they get it. They believe in the young talent, and that's what they came back for. Now, it looks like they were going to stay on longer, but ultimately they decided to leave. But it was done in a way where they could eventually come back, but they really did put over the fans, the crowd, and the WWE in the limelight. So you did two things with this segment. You know, the Shining Stars come out, which made sense. They're retiring, they're going away, sent them to Puerto Rico the shining star of the Caribbean. But when that backfires, you have another team come out to get the heat. They're setting up the table. It's going to happen. They're going to put the shining stars through the table when that team that lost early on in the night makes the impact, come out, stop it, hit a magic killer on the outside on Bubba, and then in the ring put Devon through a table. So ultimately, if the Devon and Bubba Ray Dudley ever come back, if the Dudleys ever come back, they have a reason to. But on their way out, they help put over two guys in the WWE to possibly get more heat, which is a great, great thing to do. Last and not least, Chris Jericho versus Roman Reigns. <sighs> Typical WWE, right? Putting Roman Reigns back in the main event. The mid-card stint didn't last long. He was in there, and look, he's already out of there. But is he really? Just because he's in a Universal Championship match doesn't mean he's going to win. Now, if he does win... Why shouldn't he? He's a former two-time champion, similar to Seth Rollins. It would make sense. But Kevin Owens also could win the title. And Jericho has his back. So if Jericho has his back as a champion, hmm, where do things go? Ultimately, in the end, Jericho would try to come out and uh, pull off the victory. But Kevin Owens' distraction didn't work so hot. And Roman Reigns would ultimately get the victory to a lot of boos and a lot of pissed-off fans. But, again, Chris Jericho is showing he's having one of the best runs in his WWE career. I thought it played out very well, and the ending was really good. So Roman Reigns advances. And next week, we have a Fatal 4-Way match between Roman Reigns, Kevin Owens, Big Cass. Think about that. Big Cass and Seth Rollins. Now, the two big names screaming out to win would probably be Seth Rollins or Roman Reigns. But the sneaker in there, Kevin Owens, well, that's where my money's on. Because I think it's time. Let Kevin Owens pick up the victory. But if he doesn't, you can fall back on what they've got going on as a tag team. And that will wrap it up. For Raw, August 22nd, 2016. My name is Toby Thank you very much for watching this video. And until next time, we will see you next week on Raw. And hopefully, they continue what they've got going on. And make it a little bit better. Until next time, we will see you all later.